Ventures. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero conversation, and we'll be talking with Jeremiah Williams, who is the Director of Integrated Machining and Technology at Danville Community College. So welcome, Jeremiah. Well, thank you, Chris, for having me. I'm very excited to have you, sir, and would love, looking forward to your story because I know it has some twists and some turns in it. So, man, just get us going. Tell us about your journey. Oh, boy. Uh, it's, it's a long story. So a um, little bit about my background. Um, you know, I started off. Uh, I've had a full-time job since I was 14. Uh, I worked for a, a dairy farm that was across the street from my mom and dad's house. And um, through that opportunity, I was able to actually get, you know, a brief introduction into precision machining just through some of the, the shops and companies that we would take some of the equipment to. Um, it it kind of opened up a, a, a curiosity. Mm -hmm. And so... I decided that I was going to visit, you know, my local community college and 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 learn a little bit more about this. And, and I found out that they did have a precision machining program. And so I decided to enroll. Um, and so that was back in 2009. Um, I graduated from that program in, in 2011 and started working for uh, Rolls Royce North America in Prince George, Virginia. Um, so. During my time there, you know, I started off as as basically, you know, a, a grunt worker and I was super excited and, and eager to learn. And so, you know, I was trying to just take in as, as much as I possibly could. And the next thing I know, um, I, I was promoted to their senior machining specialist. So I was leading one of the manufacturing cells in that facility on the subtractive side of things. Um, and, and I was just getting experience everywhere from you know, five axis mill turns, CNC broaching, CNC grinding, um, a lot of NDT processes as well as quality. And it was just some amazing experience that, that can never be replaced. And, and through that job, I also had the opportunity to do a, a lot of traveling and, and see not only, you know, how we were doing things in America, but how things were being done on the European side as well, both in the UK and in Germany. And, and I visited some of our um, industry partners, manufacturing facilities to get more acquainted with some of the processes, the equipment, which also, again, it just, you know, kind of opened my eyes that much more to see what else is out there. Um, so in 2014, um, a gentleman named Troy Simpson reached out to me um, about an idea that he had to create a new third year capstone program that was designed to teach very high level advanced machining skills. And so you okay. reached out to me and, and asked if this was something that I would be interested in, in heading up. And so, you know, I decided that this would be a really good opportunity to take all of the skills and experiences that I've had and, and replicate it many times over and, and send, you know, not just one Jeremiah out to industry, but, but hundreds of them. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I made the switch from Rolls Royce to Danville Community College. Um, and when I started here, we had a, an empty lab space, no curriculum, and, and we had nine months to put all this information together. But with a lot of help from several industry partners, we were able to at least get a heading on the key competencies that we wanted to teach. And so ever since 2015, I've, I've been directing and leading this program, and we have been forever changing the curriculum and tweaking it to make sure that we are preparing um, the most elite level machinists for industry. Yeah. Now, so I'm curious. So when you, when you're talked about you're working since 14 to dairy farm, are you from Virginia from that area? I, I am. So I'm originally a Danville native. Yes. Okay. Okay. So Danville native, then you left and went to Rolls Royce and then they, they lured, they lured you back. Yeah, they lured me back here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, I mean, you're having a, a huge impact there for sure. That that Rolls Royce plant is impressive, by the way. I've, I've been by there myself. It's incredible. They're in Prince George, and that's one of the, the eco serves them as well. So good stuff. I love what you're doing. You're working with a lot of industry leaders right now as you develop your curriculum and your program. What are you hearing as the challenges? I mean, what, what's the big challenges that they're, they're bringing to you that you're trying to solve? Um, so, you know, initially, the, the, the biggest issue that we were trying to solve is when, when this program was kicked off, 
Um, you know, five axis machining was not in its infancy, but it was still considered a, a very uh, foreign slash advanced concept. And so up front, that was our focus um, was to make sure that we were preparing these technicians to to go into, you know, the, these heavy multi axis machine shops. Um, and, you know, they were ready to, to tackle any challenges that came their way, because at the time, five axis was kind of the peak of things. And so if you could, if you could do that, then you could knock it down a few levels and do the simpler stuff. Right. Um, so since then, you know, our, our primary focus up front was um, CAD CAM and multi-axis machining that has transitioned into, um, you know, dual spindle turning as more companies incorporate that technology. Um, and, and now, you know, I would say our new focus is robotics and automation and additive technologies. Okay. So you're starting to work in that additive world as well now. Yep. So, so we do have, you know, uh, some, some additive equipment on site here, you know, a UMC Meltio machine, a lot of Mark Forged, both on the Metal X and the composite side. Um, but we're currently in the process of, of trying to start integrating the robotics and automation side into our third year capstone program. Right. Well, that's going to, that's going to be incredible when you get, when you get to that point, I definitely know that's a big need. We hear that out there from the manufacturers as well. And, you know, so far as if, if somebody is thinking about a program like this or wanting to pursue a career like you did in machining, do you have any advice when you look back, man, I wish somebody would have told me this when I first got started type of type of advice you like to offer up? Uh, you know, I, I think the, the only advice that, that I, I would really like to push is if somebody is interested in this career field, it, it, there's so many opportunities out there, but don't stop, stop learning. Um, you know, there, there are people that, you know, they graduate from a program and, and for them that in their head, they're at their peak. But there is always something more there. There's always new emerging technologies. And, and so I would say continue to chase that. And, and up front, while you have the time and, and while, you know, from a high school graduate standpoint, while you're still young, you know, invest in yourself heavily and, and, and get yourself to a point where you are truly ready to position yourself for the direction that industry is heading. Right. Now, 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 there may be guys listening and girls that are thinking when you say industry, they go straight to the 3Ds, right? Dark, dirty, dangerous. And yep. they don't have anything to do with that because that's that's an industry that's out there. And I, I want to have a, a nice job behind a computer or something like that. Mm -hmm. Please debunk that myth. Like, give, give oh. this, speak some truth to this. So I, I would stand up right now if I could. Um, <laughs> but I, I come to work every day and, and I'm I'm machining parts and, and I'm teaching class and things like that. Every day I show up in, in slacks, dress shoes and, and a nice collared shirt. You know, today I'm in a sweater. It's a little bit chilly here today. Um, but, you know, I, I go home and, and if I want to, you know, leave my house and go sit down and have a nice dinner with my wife, I don't need to take a shower. I don't need to wash any grease off me. I'm still plenty right. clean, just fine. Um, and so, you know, industry is not what people think that it is anymore. Um, manufacturers have recognized that um, the technology is far outweighed or has advanced to the point where, you know, you, you don't have to work with this, these dirty, grimy machines. Um, you know, a, a CNC high precision environment is is almost medically clean. Um, and, mm -hmm. and that's that's the the way that you have to keep it you know if you're trying to produce these very high precision accurate components cleanliness is key to everything so you know if you look at rolls royce for example you know that was a a shop with with white floors white walls white ceilings everybody came in dressed nice and and we're making components that are you know worth you know upwards of a half million dollars every day and, and we all leave there you know just as clean as when we walked in the building um, and, and, you know, we're not, we're not sweaty. We're not dirty. That that's just not what manufacturing is today. It is a very clean, pleasant working environment. Yes. Amen to that, bro. So, I mean, th thank you for sharing that. So I'm curious for you too. So much is changing with technology, with the evolution of, of industry. You have the whole smart manufacturing industry 4.0, you have the IIOT, all these different things that are hitting the plant floor. How are you keeping up? 
with what's changing any resources that you that you plug in regularly to to see what's coming so that you'll be able to know how to plan for the future yeah so you know aside from you know the typical thing that most people see is you know trade magazine stuff like that they always hint at new emerging technologies but staying in close contact with your local industry your hfos you know your machine distributors your tooling manufacturers um, all of these various sectors, they can always give you insight into, you know, what's coming next, what are manufacturers buying, what is the market looking like? And so, you know, you can really use the market to see, you know, people are now primarily purchasing five axis machines and um, application specific tooling. And so that kind of gives you a, a heading that they are taking their work. Um, and then also on the robotics and automation side, you know, you can see that market also picking up, which is a clear sign of the technologies that are starting to be implemented. But the simplest thing is to just stay in touch with your local manufacturers. You know, they can always tell you, you know, this is some new technology that we're looking at because it's going to allow us to be much more productive. So that, that already tells you that the technician that goes into that company this is the skill set that they need to have to be successful. Right. Right. I'm curious. Now, when I, when I think back through my history at Eco, we used to have a motor shop. As part of the motor shops, we had machine shops. And we were, all, we were doing manual machining. Mm -hmm. But I remember all those technicians, they all had these different skill sets, and they would help each other. There was a lot of, particularly for the younger ones that were coming in, the younger mechanics machinists that I would hire, there was a, Kind of a big brother, if you will, you know, mentoring that would go along. How does that? I mean, do you see that? Are your graduates prepared to be a mentor to others, or do they have mentors that can help them along the way as well? You know, as that as they continue to develop and grow as machinists. Absolutely. So I think that that's that's a personal level thing. So you know, we see graduates that come through this program, and and they have very very strong leadership skills as well as mm -hmm. hard skills. And so when they leave and they go to industry, they're prepared from day one to to become that that mentor level person, you know, right. somebody that everybody looks up to and respects the decisions that they make and they want to listen and learn from them. And then there's other people that, you know, they haven't quite refined their leadership skills or their communication skills. And and that's OK. You know, sometimes it just takes people a little bit longer to to grow into those sorts of things but they will be coupled with somebody that does have that ability. And so they'll have an opportunity to witness it and, and live it firsthand and learn from someone else. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I love that answer because really just it's, it's really an individual and your personal skill sets and, and where you're comfortable with. But at the end of the day, I think trying to help others and, you know, lend a helping hand wherever we can, that's what we all need to be doing. So I am curious on the last the last question before we jump off the professional path and, and talk about you outside of work. When you have a great day there at DCC and you're and you're doing things, you feel like you're making an impact. What do you, what are you doing that day? What what brings you the most joy in your work? Uh, so I think for me, you know, I I have a lot of skills and a lot of knowledge that that I'm trying to convey to these students. I, I'm I'm trying to give every part of me to them, you know, right. and, you know, my, my least favorite thing to do is to tell a student, I don't know. Um, and so anytime that, you know, I, I leave work and there has been those moments during the day where, you know, I, I, we just call it the aha moment where you can see that you have just taught these students something new and it clicks in their brain and they immediately get it. That is the most satisfying feeling and, you know, for them, you know, they're riding this academic high where, you know, I, I've just learned something that, it, that is incredible. I never thought that I would be able to obtain this. You know, from day one, when I entered into my education, I saw people doing this and, and I was wondering if I would ever get to that point. And yeah. now I'm here and I've <laughs> achieved it. And I realized that, you know, it, it's exciting and I'm really good at it. So when I see that look on students' faces that, that they have truly understood something and and they are ready to start implementing it and and testing it out that that's a really really satisfying feeling amen man i love it i love it well let's take a, a, a turn off the professional path and let's talk about you outside of work 
we like to just get to know our heroes on, on a more personal level. So just get us started, man. What's something you enjoy doing for fun? Any hobbies or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I've, I've got too many hobbies. Um, so, <laughs> uh, you know, I've, I'm married. I've got three kids. Um, and, you know, they obviously they consume a, a large portion of my time, which is OK. I, I enjoy every second with them. Um, but, you know, my oldest, she is. She's in everything. So, you know, I catch myself being the, the volleyball coach or uh, sometimes the dance coach, which that that's done behind closed doors. I don't want anybody seeing that one. That's right. That's um, right. Now, how old is your oldest? She's 12. OK. Um, so I've got I've got a three year old, five year old and 12 year old. Um, but, you know, me personally, you know, I do a lot of dirt bike riding. So most mostly woods riding and, and racing. Um, so that 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 brings me a lot of joy. Uh, sometimes not my wife when the injuries that come with it uh, happen. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm also a little bit of a, a little bit of a gym buff. I, I spend a lot of time, you know, working out. It's a good time for me to just kind of be in my thoughts. And, and you know, it, it's a good way for me to kind of relax and unwind. Um, and then, you know, aside from that, just, you know, a little bit of golf every now and then. But you know, pretty right. basic, typical male activities. There you go. Now, so you got a twelve-year-old girl, and then more three and a five-year-olds. They boys, girls. What you got there? Five-year-olds, boy, and a three-year-olds, a girl. Okay, all right. So, man, you you have to you have you got a lot going on at the house <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Never quiet. <laughs> That's awesome. That's all. Anything else you like to share about your family? Because we love to hear about family here on from our heroes. Uh no. I mean, um, you know this. All of the stuff that's going on in Danville, obviously, you know, it, it, it keeps me busy. I, I've got a full workload all the time. And so, you know, for me, you know, that, that opportunity to finally get home and, and unwind with my family, that that's that's a huge part of my day. You know, my wife is, is, a, is a huge supporter of mine. And, you know, she tries really hard to, to understand the things that I do at work and, and offer advice when she can. Um, and so, you know, it's nice to to have you know, that family to come home to, to, you know, just separate yourself from all of the amazing things that are going on, you know, as, as incredible as it is, we all still need a break from it and, and some time to just kind of relax and unwind. You got that right. Well, I mean, you're, well, it sounds like you have a, just a wonderful family, just blessings to you in the future there. So I'm curious from, from, from your standpoint, from a personal development or just things you enjoy for fun, any podcast, books, uh, maybe next Netflix series, whatever. What do you enjoy consuming that uh, you like to share out there? Oh, boy. Um, so I'm a I'm, I'm a documentary guy. So, you know, anything that, that's real, um, okay. you know, I, I, some way, shape or form, I, I figure out how to correlate it to it. So, I mean, not to be cliche here, but, you know, the, the How It's Made show, you know, I, I enjoy that. Um, but you know, I, I get a, a lot of my enjoyment out of just doing things. You know, I, I'm not a big fan of just going and sitting down. So, yeah. you know, if there's a, a new project that I want to take on, then then I carry myself out to the garage and, you know, I try to teach myself a, a new skill, whether it's, you know, working on, you know, my dirt bikes or my motorcycles or, you know, the other day I was sitting in my garage trying to teach myself how to nap arrowheads out. And so, you know, I just try to get into these little things and, and it just, you know, you learn something from it at the end of the day. Yeah. Now, you said dirt bikes and motorcycles. So so you're a road bike guy as well? A, a little bit. Uh, sometimes my the, the dress code at work is not very uh, conducive for riding motorcycles. But whenever I have the opportunity to, you know, I'll, I'll drag it out of the garage and, and go for a little spin. So what, what are you riding there? Uh, so I, I'm a KTM guy. So I've got a Duke 690. It's uh sport touring bike um okay. I'd, i've also got a cruiser that's that's in development um it's, oh. a, it's a drag frame with a, a harley front end and a cb 750 engine on it it's it's a frankenstein of a bike but it's got a cool look to it i enjoy it well i'd like to see a picture now i'm a bike guy myself so send me some pictures of that one we'll put the picture of that in in the uh the youtube for our listeners here man that, yeah, that sounds awesome awesome all right well we do something jeremiah on the 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 hero episodes, we call it the lightning round, just quick fire, uh, just fun stuff just to get the listeners to know you a little bit better. If you're willing to play, man, we'll jump right in. All right. Yeah, let's give it a shot. All right. But what's your favorite food? Ah, uh, quiche. Quiche. Okay. Quiche. That is the first quiche answer we've ever gotten for that question. Okay. Because most people are pizza or Mexican or right. Okay. 
Do me off with that one, brother. <laughs> All right. So how about uh, adult beverage? Uh, George Dickel. Okay. All right. Man, I definitely need to make it up Danville. All right. Let's 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 go. What's uh what's your favorite app on your phone? Uh Instagram. Okay. I get it. I get it. It sucks us all in. No, no, no doubt. What about a uh, sports team? Uh I, I'm I'm not a I'm not a sports team guy. I don't watch sports, but you know, if I I guess if I had to to, to do pick something, you know, I I, I do watch motocross. So okay. more of a Ken Rocks and Eli Tomac type fan. Okay. All right. Very cool. What's your uh, all time favorite movie? Uh, Days of Thunder. Nice. Nice. You can't come in because we're eating ice cream. There you go. I love it. How about uh, all time favorite TV show? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, Oh, I'm seem like a child when I say this, but I, man, I love Tom and Jerry. Okay, <laughs> that's, a per, that's a personal on that one too, brother. I love it. I love it. Uh, guilty pleasure. You got any guilty pleasures? Uh, oh, well, like I mentioned, you know, I, I, I love working out, but I also like to eat. So, uh, dessert is definitely my weakness. Yep, yep. It's my kryptonite too, my friend. Yeah. All the way. So last question for you, Jeremiah, dogs or cats? Dogs, for sure. Yeah, right. There was only one right answer. You got it, buddy. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we, got a, we got a German Shepherd and, and a black Great White Pyrenees. <laughs> really? A black one? Okay. All right. Never seen that before, man. I had to make, you have to send so many pictures over because we got to share all these things with our, with our listeners. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a lot of fun, Jeremiah. We always wrap up Eco Ask Why with the why. So if somebody wants to know what your personal why is, what are you going to tell them? Uh, I'd say, why not advanced manufacturing? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Why not, right? I mean, I love what you're doing. I love how, how you're serving others. Again, where should people go to learn about you and the things that you're doing there at DCC? Uh, so I would say, you know, check out the website for Danville Community College here in Virginia, as well as the website for the Advanced Learning, uh, excuse me, uh, the Institute for Advanced Learning and Research. Okay. We'll make sure all that stuff is synced up in the show notes for you listeners. So, Jeremiah, anything else you'd like to share? Not at all. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been an honor, sir. I hope you have a great day. You too. How was that story with Jeremiah? I'll tell you what, he, this, the, the wonderful things he's done in his career from working on the dairy farm to Rolls Royce and now back in, in Danville, Virginia, overseeing this program, impacting lives of men and women every day. The skills that he is helping these people develop, unbelievable. And then they're taking those skills and, they're, and it's directly rolling right into industry, into manufacturing. Then he's also building other teachers and the impact, the ripple effect, just think about that ripple effect. It's huge. You know, to cast that stone and just watch the ripples. And the, the, the ripple that, that Jeremiah is creating is unbelievable. So I highly encourage you, go check out this, the links in the show notes. Seriously, there's, those programs are incredible. They're making an impact. And you may know someone who just needs to have this shared with them. So there's your call to action. Share this conversation. Share the link with someone who may be interested to go check this stuff out, but you never know just that random act of you taking intentional action could have a huge impact on their life. So again, if you're like an eco, that's why we would ask that you give us a five-star rating, write a review. That makes all the difference in the world. Keep coming back week after week. We've been doing this for several years now. Our catalog is huge. Go back and check out some of our previous episodes. We have, we've covered topics from power, manufacturing, automation, uh, cybersecurity, and then, of course, all of our wonderful heroes like Jeremiah. So we hope you enjoyed it. Have a, have a great day. And remember to keep asking why. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. Eco is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. 
Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y dot com.